Hi everyone, I'm Tim John, founder of BeyondThePedway.com. Uh, today I have with me Brittany, is it Laughlin or Laughlin? Laughlin. Laughlin. Yeah, just to throw you off. <laughs> I, Brittany, I am the worst person in pronouncing names, so I am so sorry. It, no yours is, I mean, yours I would consider an easier one, and I thought I had it there. So that's pretty embarrassing, but I'm, everyone knows I'm bad at pronouncing names, so I just need to work on that. So Brittany is the founder of uh, G-Trot, which is this really cool social traveling website. I was going to call it app, but I, the, the, the line between app and website is so blurred these days. So website, app, uh, social cool tool. Yeah. Um, so Brittany, where, well, first of all, before G-Trot, before any of this, you were working in American Express, right? Yes. What were you doing in American Express? How'd you end up there? Um, so I had interned my junior year, like summer between junior and senior year at American Express. Um, I went to NYU, so it was in the city. I really liked it. I got to work on new product launches um, over the summer, and I took a full-time offer to come back. So I worked there about two and a half years after I graduated doing uh, acquisition, um, so acquiring new small business card members, and then new product launches. So I got to work on um, Lowe's Business Rewards Card launch. How did you acquire new businesses? Was this, was this uh, cold calling? Did you just call up local yeah. small businesses and try and get them on board? Yeah, yeah. So basically the way it works is, um, you know, Open, which is a division of American Express, has a number of uh, small business cards that they want cards, that they want businesses to use. So basically we just had to... Um, you know, we use multiple different channels, so email, you know, Salesforce, um, uh, online, like um, trade shows, <laughs> like basically any sort of acquisition channel that you could think of. So I guess it was more like marketing channels um, and marketing them. And it was cool because I got to actually manage a, you know, $96 million budget. <laughs> Um, you personally were managing ninety-six million dollars. <laughs> yeah, so I I was managing all the the budget for the team and just like how things were going to get allocated and keeping track of everything. So it's very different coming from that type of environment to a startup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my good, I can't even imagine. Did you feel like the pressure, like that you really had to deliver just because of that number? Yeah. Well, I worked with a, a great team, so it wasn't all riding on my back, but um, just sort of the way we viewed money um, was much different, you know, oh, a million dollars here, a million dollars there, it wasn't as big of a deal as, as being in a small company where it's, you know, the entire funding you may ever get. <laughs> so, absolutely. So why did you leave American Express? What was their calling, something you saw that you wanted to do instead? Yeah, um, I, my parents were both entrepreneurs, um, so I always knew that I wanted to run my own company. I just didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So um, I just sort of uh, was taking on like freelance jobs on the side because my job at American Express was great, but it just wasn't the speed at which I wanted to be moving. So things happened very slowly and very, um, you know, it was very hard to innovate there. So I knew that, you know, I would eventually leave. It just was, you know, spending that time figuring out what I would do. Um, how, how did you figure out what you wanted to do? Because you were there two and a half years. I'm curious, what at what point did you decide it was time to go? And I imagine it was probably when you decided what you wanted to do, but how did you get there? Yeah, um, so probably within the first six months of being there, I knew that I wanted, corporate America wasn't for me. <laughs> um, but, you know, the economy was going through some really hard times, and I didn't have a sort of plan on what I was going to jump into. So, you know, my my parents gave me great advice to sort of like stay on the same path you're on, save a bunch of money, and then when you figure it out, you'll have, you know, everything will line up and you can just go. Um, so I spent the next sort of, you know, year and a half figuring that out by, um, I actually used Twitter, was a great tool to kind of figure out what I was interested in by sort of following all these different topics and areas, because I am interested in a lot of things, <laughs> technology, um, green, fashion, food, uh, all sorts of different stuff. And it was kind of, okay, which one of these is going to be the right thing for me? Um, so using Twitter to kind of just drink from the fire hose and see all the options out there and then slowly start unfollowing all these things that I found myself not as interested in. Maybe it was like a hobby, but it wasn't something I was like 
jumping out of my seat to read more about. Gotcha. So you just, and, and this happened over time, right? I mean, I imagine you weren't on Monday, but by the end of the week, you were like, all right, I'm ready. I know what I want. <laughs> no, no, it took more, you know, maybe a month at first. And then I sort of narrowed it down to the ones I really were interested, which was like green tech, um, you know, computer technology, uh, and film. So I did an undergraduate degree in film at Tisch School of the Arts. Um, so I majored in business and minored in film. So I wanted to explore the, that sort of opportunity as well. So I took uh, a, another film class. Um, I started going to green events and I started going to tech events. So I took it to the next level where I was actually getting more involved in these communities. So in a sense you were building your network in these communities and learning about who's there and what's there. Yes. Yeah. I so, like that. Uh, film, film and business. That's a cool uh, combination. Because you have yeah. the business and then the, the arts and then, you know, the in-between. That's really cool. Yeah, it was always interesting to go from, you know, Stern, which people would show up to class wearing suits, to, you know, Tish, where people would have all sorts of different, you know, sort of interests and hair colors and everything like that. <laughs> <laughs> So, so G-Trot, why don't you give me, I don't think I gave it the right uh, pitch. Why don't you give me the elevator pitch of G-Trot here so that I don't uh, stab it or mess it up here? Yeah, so G-Trot is a place that makes it easy to share travel plans, connect with friends in your destination, and get deals for your upcoming trip. So basically, we want to help make your travel experience better by connecting you with friends, um, you know, people you already know. Either they've they're in that destination and you can meet up with them or they have advice they could give you because they've visited that place before. So you think, you know, getting advice from people you trust is a lot more valuable than, you know, sort of searching the web for tons and tons of reviews. So this is the sort of thing like where I'm saying, all right, I'm going to LA next week. I'm going to hop on GTRAT and see who's there, what's there, where I should be going based on my friends' opinions or like just everyone on GTRAT's opinions. Yep, so you connect on Facebook, so all of your friends on Facebook are all of your friends on G-Trot. Um, and once you add a trip, we'll immediately show you all your friends that live in that destination, friends that have been there before, and if you have any friends that have overlapping travel plans. So we make it really easy to, to see who's there, and then reach out and connect with them. So it's one-click connection, you can say, hey, I'm going to LA, what should I do when I'm there? Or, you know, let's meet up for coffee, or... Um, different ways to get advice, but making it very, very simple. So it's a platform that makes it really easy to share with your network. The, the connect with Facebook option, that brings me to a, something I've always wondered. Um, I feel like we have so many networks nowadays and we all use them differently. So for me, Facebook is really a personal thing. Like I have pictures of my kid on there and if I haven't met you in person or, or know you well enough or I trust you, I won't add you on Facebook. Twitter, I'll talk to anybody in the world. Yeah. So for me, I feel like on GTROT, I would probably be more interested in where my Twitter people are. But how, how does that work? Can I, can I only do it on Facebook? Or is there a way for me to like tap into other circles of mine? Yep. So right now, we're only connected with Facebook. So only your Facebook friends can sort of see your trips. We do allow the option where you can tweet your plans um, or share it with a short link. So you can email it or you can you know, sort of put it on Twitter and get people to connect that way. But it's up to you. Um, and that's kind of why we chose Facebook is because, one, there's a really large number of people on there, but it's usually people you trust, you know, sort of letting them know where you're going to be, and, you know, when you're not home and that type of stuff. That's a really good point, yeah. I'd be more inclined to let people on Facebook know that information. So, uh, so I, I'm thinking, you're at American Express selling cards to local small businesses, <laughs> and then now you're trying to help people travel. Um, why? Why are you trying to help people travel? Yeah, well, I'm a big traveler. Um, I, I knew that I wanted to go into travel because all my free time and all my extra money was going to trips and checking out the world and going different places. Um, I was lucky I got to travel a lot when I was younger. Um, I was a military uh, brat, so <laughs> my uh, parents took us all over and they had the travel bug and they sort of took us all over the, the world once we grew up a little bit. Um, so I made a goal to go to all seven continents before I was 25, and um, I reached that goal. <laughs> but it's along the way, you know, all of the travel planning, it's, you know, there's so much content out there on the web, and it's so hard to just dig through all of the noise and 
you know, feel like you're getting the best advice and making the right choice. And especially when people spend a lot of money to travel, they want the experience to be great. So, you know, just helping make that process easier, the way social networks kind of bring people together, share locations, you know, share places they've checked in. There seemed like a huge opportunity to kind of bring those two together and make it really simple to get, you know, good advice. One part of your story that I love is where you, I mean, you, you're a really determined person and you really sought out what you were looking for. Can you share with us a little bit how you got from the point where you knew what you were looking for and you started going to industry events to the point where you're actually working with G-Trot? Like what happened in the middle there that connected you two? Yeah, so I was really interested in tech at the time. Um, I pitched Elance.com to send me to South by Southwest to blog for them. So I took days off from work and I went to South by Southwest um, and I met so many people that were involved with tech and industries and had all these great ideas. And I knew after like leaving, I was like, okay, this is it. Like I'm gonna do something in tech. I'm gonna do something in travel because I really am passionate about it, and um, this is the company I want to build. So I basically drew up sort of a rough business plan, and when I got back to New York, I was like, okay, let me see what competition is out there. So I spent a couple hours on Google going through, um, basically vetting through every travel website I could find. Um, there's a website, Startuply, and it lists all these different startups in different industries. So I basically went through, like, 200 uh, travel startups and kind of narrowed it down to any ones that seemed to maybe overlap with the ideas that I had. So I narrowed down to about 20 that were on the East Coast, you know, travel, social, and I just started reaching out. Um, and through that process, I met Zach, who had started this company, g -Tri, at Harvard, and he was working on it um, part-time because he had a full-time job, and we basically met up and we're like, okay, like how can we bring our ideas together and make this, you know, something bigger than it already is. So you were just, I mean, going through 200, you know, startups mm -hmm. and all that. I mean, that to me says determination. I don't know. Well, I do many people that would do that, but only people like yourself would actually take the time to just, you know, I want this and I'm going to find it. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, there's so much information on the web. Um, it's important to use you know, not only to know what competition exists out there, but also to be, you know, the most knowledgeable about your industry as anyone. So sort of going through that whole process and seeing what existed, it was very clear that there was this hole. And my, you know, sort of intuition of like, oh, I think there's an opportunity here. Maybe it was right because, um, you know, there weren't a hundred other companies already doing it. What's your your overall goal for G-Trot? Like, what are you looking to do for people just... You know, someone comes up to you and says, what, what's g try?" You're saying, I'm going to do this for you. Yeah. Um, we want to make it super easy to get, review, you know, recommendations from friends. Um, so in the trip planning process, as well as on your trip, um, just finding the people that make it better. Because there's so many times that it's happened to me where there's kind of serendipity where I run into someone and I didn't realize that they were going to be there. And, uh, you know, we connect up and it's a lot of fun. So kind of speeding up that um, serendipity process. <laughs> I've seen that happen a handful of times over the past like six to eight months on Twitter um, where I'll see people like check into an airport and then they'll see someone checked in there and they'll like meet up in the airport. And it's so, like I'm witnessing this on Twitter. It's a really weird thing. Yeah. Um, and it's exactly what you're saying. It's like this serend I feel like with tools like Twitter and all this and like what you're doing, it really enables that more. I guess it, it's less serendipity than a more plan, but yeah. um, I, I can see what you're saying. You're, you're trying to, and I, the thing I love about you is you're bringing the, um, your project is you're bringing the trust aspect. Is that, is that the whole like, because there's so many travel tools online nowadays. My yeah. biggest question for you was, you know, how are you any different? But that's where I'm starting to think you're different is that you're, is that, is that the idea? The trust yeah. aspect? Yes, definitely. And, you know, I think it's exciting because we're living in this time where there's more information created about locations and people than ever before. I mean, even just Facebook places started a year ago and, you know, Foursquare has been growing and people are creating all these data points and it's sort of like, okay, well, how do we utilize these to make people have really great experiences in real life? So if you know that 10 of your friends have been to, 
you know, this pizza joint in Chicago, maybe when you go visit Chicago, you're going to want to go there as well. Um, and with travel, it's so exciting because people love talking about their trips. They love sharing sort of like, oh, yeah, I went to London. These are all the cool things I did when I was there. Uh, so just making that really easy for people. Um, so it's all contained in one place. Yeah, it's I think a huge part of uh, travel, too, is the photos. Like, everyone loves to come back and show, you know, the family the photos and everybody the photos. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <We're>, <clears throat> so, in all your experience, what, what's your number one piece of advice for someone with an idea? And not even an idea, but someone who has an idea of what they want and really wants to achieve it. What's your one piece of advice for them? Yeah. Um, I think it's important to make it as concrete as possible and make it as real as possible. So taking it from that idea phase to, you know, sort of this minimum viable product. Even if it's just mocking up in, you know, I always use PowerPoint, so mocking up what I want the site to look like in PowerPoint. Like this is how it will work. Like there will be friends here. We'll use You this do your here. site mockups in PowerPoint? <laughs> I do. So look That's luckily awesome. Have, That's awesome. Luckily we have a great designer that um, can help do it, but you know, just making that idea real. Because a lot of people I've heard, like, they say, oh, I have an idea for, you know, an iPhone app or a website. I'm like, okay, well, like, well, what would it do? And they're like, oh, you know, it'll pull all these things and these things. And it's like, okay, well, what will it look like? Even if you're drawing just boxes and squares and you say, you know, um, th it's going to have five reviews of the top, whatever, you know, travel destinations. And then you click here to add more type thing. Um, as real as you can make it without you know, to the limit of your skills, if you're not a programmer, if you're not a designer, take it as far as you possibly can and then um, start showing it to people, start getting other people excited about it, getting them on board, you know, do the diligence, you know, it takes work to bring an idea to life. Um, don't be afraid of that, but, you know, start getting it out there in the world. How much of GTRI did you guys build before you started kind of putting it out there and letting people touch it and play with it and get a sense of it? Yeah, so my co-founder, Zach Smith, he started the idea at Harvard in a computer science class. Um, and it's much different than the way the site looks today. But, you know, sort of this idea of how do you help people connect when they travel. Um, so we had, you know, a first version. Uh, last November, we had a, a second version, which had new updates and, and new sort of pieces to it. And then we basically just came out of beta last week um, with a more, you know, sort of, advanced product feature. We'd raise money, so um, we did a lot of overhauling the, the functionality and the design um, with this latest release. Gotcha. Now you guys are ready to take over the travel industry, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Absolutely. amazing. What? So, I mean, you're looking to not... Uh, yeah, you're looking to kind of change the way we approach travel, right? Um, in the sense that it's more, you want us to utilize our trusted connections more. Um, if I go to Florida, figure out the best place to eat based on trusted connections. How do you foresee that playing in the future in terms of like mobile? Uh, we have so many devices now, like, you know, I, yeah. I, I don't know, I might have my iPad on the plane, I might have my laptop. How, how do you see this all working in terms of us getting this information? Are we going to always be tapping into our iPhone app and then seeing who checked in where? Or do you see this, you know, evolving more in, in some other way? Yeah, um, absolutely. I think we're thinking a lot about mobile. Right now we're only a web-based um, application um, and we're thinking about how that experience is different and the information you need is different when you're on your mobile phone versus on the web. So maybe it's more about taking those tips and recommendations you know, in the palm of your hand and you don't need all this functionality of sort of adding you know, all the trip details or tagging friends. Maybe you just want to see who's here and what should I do? So when you land, um, you know, you're no longer in the planning stage, but you're like, you're in LA, you're like, okay, here are my five friends that are here. Here are like the 10 tips that people told me I should do. Um, you know, they're on a map, I can take them with me and just make it really easy. Because with the web, it's a lot more about planning and sort of before you get there. So when you're actually there, it gets a little bit different. Mm -hmm.